Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol right here. This is the Beretta APX. It's a striker fired 9mm pistol from Beretta. Um, this one here has had a lot of hype to it uh, in the last couple months and they had a first run that came out for law enforcement and military folks and now if you guys are watching this video they're available to the public so I wanted to wait until that happened so that way everyone could watch this video and if you guys want to get one you could run out and grab one regardless of what you do for a living so what we're going to do is actually step back out to the range and test the accuracy of this pistol with a few different loads and see how it does at least with this guy behind the trigger and uh, then we're going to come back in and look at all the details of this pistol because there's a lot going on with this little guy and uh, we're going to try to show you all that coming up next see what kind of groups we can get with this little pistol here and uh, up first we have the Minuteman munitions 115 grain total metal jacket um, it's probably 98 to 99 percent of what we put through it to this point I've had zero issues with it and uh, I don't know what kind of accuracy we're actually getting with it I haven't benched it yet so we'll do that and then put a couple different um, self-defense type loads through it and see what it does we have a target down range at 25 yards a little CTK precision rest here uh, to try to minimize me and uh, we'll see what it'll do. Ooh, hot breath, hot breath. All right, so I was actually shooting at the uh, left square, so it appears that for me anyway, as the sights come from the factory, I'm hitting a little bit to the right in terms of uh, point of impact, at least with that load anyway. Up next, we have some uh, Federal HSTs. These are the 150 grain, so 150. So heavy for caliber. Ammo here, we'll put about five rounds through it and uh, see how it likes for that. Now I'm gonna go for the target on the right. We'll see how it does for the square on the right, rather. Yeah, a little bit to the right, not quite so much with that load. Uh, one thing I want to point out, if you guys are new to the channel and haven't heard me say this before in a uh, pistol accuracy test, don't judge the uh, ejection by what you see right here. Judge it by the rest of the review. Because um, when I do these accuracy portions of pistols, I try to put as little input as I can on the actual pistol itself. So I'm sort of limp resting it a little bit. So that obviously can change the ejection pattern. So next load up is uh, 124 grain, uh, 9 millimeter, obviously. HSTs, this is the plus PUOs. It's gonna be a little bit hotter and uh, a little bit lighter than the last load, but heavier than the first one. So we'll see what it's gonna do. Uh, typically I'd be putting this uh, right in the center, but I'm a little scared that we're gonna have some overlapping groups. So I'm gonna put it right above that at the top of the circle. At least that's gonna be my point of aim anyway. We'll see what happens. Let's go check those groups out. First up with the Minuteman Munitions. Just under two inches, so like an inch and three quarters on that one. Definitely a good group. Uh, came over here with 150 grain, opened up a little bit. Right at two and three quarter inches on that one. Then we had the 124 grain plus peas. 
and we're at three and a quarter inches on that one. I'm not sure if that one was me or not. There's really no way to know uh, without reshooting it, but we don't sh reshoot groups here as, long, as uh, long time viewers know. So, um, you know, being able to keep it at a two inch at 25 yards with me behind the gun um, with, you know, with factory sights, I'm not mad about that at all. It seems to shoot just fine. Now that we're done with the accuracy, getting on to the details of the actual pistol, first thing we're gonna cover is the frame. So uh, this is one of the big features of the pistol is that it is modular. So you can actually add different color frames as well as different size frames because inside, as you'll see when we take the pistol apart, it has a stainless steel chassis system that is the actual serial numbered portion of the firearm. You can look right there. That is where your serial number is, and that is on the chassis. So the frame is actually uh, interchangeable. So this one comes with a black uh, grip and frame, but you can buy all different ones. So here's what it looks like when it comes with it. We have this OD green one here, and uh, that's the reason I wanted to sort of point it out is that these back straps are interchangeable. So this is the medium one, this is the large one. Now for my hands, which are relatively large, I prefer the large size. However, when I posted pictures of it on social media uh, with the beaver tail riding up in the back, a lot of people said it looked really ugly. So for the purposes of this video, we're rolling with the uh, medium back strap, but just be aware that you can change that to fit your hand size. And uh, they even have smalls available. Now this grip itself is very narrow. Um, it feels much smaller than say like a Gen 4 Glock 19 with a small uh, grip in there or no grip rather um, so it's very very narrow for somebody who has small hands that certainly would be a good thing so any of your standard accessories lights lasers anything like that will fit out there it's very simple to do just take your accessory line it up with the uh, appropriate cross slot and then tighten down as needed so of course the surefire x400 fits on there just fine you loosen it up comes right off so that's certainly a good thing that most modern fighting guns will have moving on back this is a takedown a uh, little lever we'll show you that here in just a second and we do have ambidextrous slide release and slide stop so on that note I think a lot of new guns for some reason it's a trend I've noticed are sort of enlarging these and me personally that's not something I like because I tend to shoot with a thumbs forward grip and uh, a lot of the larger ones I will hit and I've never hit this one so that's something that makes this pistol uh, endear itself to me because I just hate that when you're riding at home and you know the last round doesn't hold open this one I've never had that issue either way and of course it is ambidextrous and actually functions ambidextrous, unlike some of the newer pistols out there. The magazine release is not ambidextrous, however, it is reversible. It comes on the left side of the pistol. You can swap it over relatively easy over to the right side for you lefties out there. And uh, the rest of the grip, it's got a few things going on up front. We have these little um, trapezoid type shapes that are, uh, they feel very similar to a Gen 4 uh, clock in terms of the grip texture up front and the finger grooves. Now, speaking of finger grooves, I know a lot of people don't like finger grooves. I don't mind them. It tends to just sort of depend how they fit my hand. These ones fit well, but should point out that they are much smaller than, say, uh, Glock finger grooves. So even if they're a little bit off, I think it would be less obtrusive uh, than some of the other uh, pistols out there on the market, like the VP9 or the Glock or something like that. Additionally, we do have a high cut up underneath the trigger guard, which I do like. It allows you to get very high up on the pistol and just gives you a very nice, comfortable grip in the hand. Combine that with a very low bore access to this pistol, which is just an awesome thing in my opinion. Uh, it really allows you to get very high up and minimizes the uh, muzzle flip when you're firing. I know a lot of people say um, bore access doesn't matter. I guess it's a personal opinion. I tend to think it does. It matters less in 9mm than other calibers, but for me, um, any little advantage I'll take. It. The back strap of the grip also has that nice texturing on there, as well as the Beretta Trident logo that you can see. Um, and the magwell is nice. It's very opened up. It's got this sort of uh, back piece on there. It's actually sort of uh, something that a lot of accessory companies do for the Glock. It gives you sort of an index point when you're putting your mag in, and to point that out, we'll just show you how the mag itself sits in there. One thing that's nice is the mag base plate is wider in the actual grip so if you have a double feed and you need to rip that magazine out it gives you a nice purchase there on the magazine to be able to pull it out also that back piece there sort of guides it into place when you're doing your reload so the magazines themselves are steel they're proprietary made by beretta there's 17 round mag so for a total of uh, 18 rounds if you carry with one in the chamber and uh, the mag catch on this is right up front i know some people don't like that type of mag catch but I guess it's a personal preference thing. I don't have an issue with it as long as it works on this pistol. 
It does. When photos of this gun first hit the U.S. shores, a lot of people said it was very ugly, uh, mostly due to these slide serrations. Now, I actually kind of think they look good, but one thing I will say is regardless of how they look, they function very well. Um, when you're grasping the slide, whether if you're doing press checks, coming over the top to clear malfunction or chamber around, you get a very, very good purchase on them because they are nice, deep grooves in the slide. So uh, regardless of what you think of them, I'll tell you they certainly function very good. Uh, the slide itself is covered in a nitrided finish, so very durable, very corrosion resistant stuff. Our sights here on the rear are going to be two dots. Up front we have one dot. Now the one dot itself is much larger than the two in the rear, so for standard sights it does draw your eye to that front uh, sight, which certainly is a good thing in my opinion. It has a square notch. I tend to prefer a rear, but that's a user preference kind of thing. A very usable sights as you guys saw when we were shooting groups. Um, no issues there. It has a ledge on the rear sight for those of you guys that want to do one-handed manipulations, and they are both uh, in the front and the rear drift adjustable for windage. Disassembly of the guns per Pretty straightforward. We're going to lock the slide to the rear, inspect the chamber, make sure it's clear. It is at this point. We are going to push on this little button here on the right side of the pistol. On mine, it's very tight, so it's not just a little push. I actually have to push it pretty hard. And at the same time, we're going to rotate this lever down. Now it's under spring tension and it wants to pop back, just like you guys saw right there. So, what I find is that if you kind of hold it with your thumb and then release the slide like that, you're in the position you want to be for takedown. You can push this level little button I should say to decock it or you can just point in a safe direction and pull the trigger and the slide will go forward and it'll come right off. You can remove your recoil uh, spring and guide rod. You'll note that it is steel and it has a double captive uh, spring on there and you can take a look at the slide. No machine marks at all. Very similar to a lot of striker fire pistols though. So we have our little uh, striker safety right there that disengages when you pull the trigger the striker spring you can see up in there so uh, very good machining no issues there at all nitride finish is nice and even throughout the barrel itself is a uh, 4.25 inches and uh, has a nice big uh, feed ramp there for feeding hollow points or anything else we've had zero malfunctions out of this gun at all eats anything we've put through it so no complaints there at all. The last thing I wanted to cover in terms of details on the pistol is going to be the trigger itself. So there's some interesting things going on in it. Number one, when you take a look at the trigger, you'll see it's very wide. Um, so that's going to do a few things for you. Number one, it's going to make it feel lighter than it is. So measured on my trigger gauge, I have a lineman trigger gauge, it measures right around six pounds pretty much every time. Very, very clean break, but it feels lighter than that due to that wide trigger. So we do have our trigger safety as well as the striker safety that we showed you earlier in the video. So if you don't push this piece in, you cannot actually depress the trigger. Now, when you pull it, you can see there's this basically this little slop up front. Then once you take that up, it's pretty nice. At this point, you have minimal movement and then a nice clean break. Very nice, like on par with Canix and Walther's and stuff like that. It's a little bit less crisp, crisp than those two, but still very clean, very easy for accuracy. Once you hit that wall, it breaks nice and clean. Now the reset, if I do it slow, it is very audible and you do feel it. However, one thing that's weird about the trigger is that right now when I'm letting go of the trigger, it doesn't really push you forward like a lot of other triggers does. It just kind of goes forward. Um, so the first time I shot it, I found myself almost waiting for the trigger to come forward and push my finger forward. Um, you know, after a few times, you get used to it. It's not an issue, but it, it is a unique trigger. I've never felt one like it. Since a lot of the local gun shops won't have the APXs in stock, we'll show you how they sort of uh, compare to a couple of popular pistols just to see how they stack up size-wise. So if we put the Glock 19 and line the, line the back of the slides up, you'll see the APX is a little bit longer out front. It's also going to be a little bit longer in the grip. So it's definitely a full-size gun in my opinion. I'm sure folks out there will carry it. Um, but in my opinion, it's not really designed for that. It's designed to be a duty type of fighting type gun. So you can see there with the 17 and the backs of the slides lined up, it's pretty much identical in terms of size, both in the grip and the frame. The frame may look a little bit shorter, but when you put that magazine in there, 
because we took everything apart, this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but we're gonna just hit a couple more points and close it out. So first off, it's gonna be price. I know everyone's always concerned with that. And this pistol, basically everywhere you look around, is gonna be sub $600. So a few places, it's gonna be even less than that. I picked mine up over at Arms Unlimited. We'll put a link down below for those of you guys looking to pick this pistol up. And um, really, they're out there, they're available, and I think they're pretty good guns. Uh, one thing I didn't hit on as well is gonna be weight unloaded with the magazine it comes in at 28 ounces so it's very comparable to most of your other you know polymer frame striker fired guns out there one thing that's a little bit weird about it is when you actually pull the trigger back the uh, disengagement of the striker safety causes a little piece here to come up now uh, looking at it i'm not entirely sure if that will be able to be milled down for folks that want to put an rmr on there it may be you may be able to shorten it a little bit so that it's not a problem but it's kind of an odd feature i'm not sure really why beretta put that on there but again we've had zero malfunctions of any kind running different loads through it hollow point full metal jacket whatever uh, ran them all and ran them without issue so that's really all you can ask for in, out of a pistol as long as your accuracy is good and it certainly was as you guys saw earlier in the video if you guys have any questions about this gun that we didn't cover here in the video by all means post down below in the comment section you can also post over at my facebook page as always thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do so and we'll see you in the next video